So in this section we will cover linear systems and in particular what we mean by linearity. Um, it's quite a, a well-known concept that of linearity and so it's really important to understand what we mean by linearity and how that contrasts with uh, non-linearities and non-linear systems. So starting off with the very basics then, this is the very familiar uh, linear equation although you'll notice um, it's of the form y equals mx, just like a, a gradient of a line, um, not even y equals mx plus c, because if we have the offset, then in the context that we're looking at, that wouldn't even count as a, as a properly linear mapping. So here we've just got y equals mx, just a line. And as we know that for a linear equation like that, y equals mx, if we put in some input value x1 for the uh, independent variable, then as we map it through this uh, linear equation, we'll just get some output y1, which is just equal to m, the gradient, times um, x1. So that's all very straightforward. Um, that means that if we were to put in two times that uh, original value, so 2x1, then when we map that through the linear equation, we'd simply get two times the output. So that is very much as expected. Um, and then also if we put in a different value, say x2, put that into the linear equation, so we get uh, y equals mx2, which we're going to label as y2. So far, so good. Now, the point of linearity really is this, and this begins to introduce the uh, principle of superposition, that if we were to introduce to this uh, mapping um, both x1 and x2 added together, so that's what I'm showing here, x1 plus x2, and put that through the linear equation, then the output that we obtain is the sum of the outputs that we obtained from when we just put in x1 and x2 separately. So x1 and x2 gave us y1 and y2. Then when we put both inputs in together, adding them together, we get the sum um, of the respective outputs. So that is what is particular about a linear system. And it's very much what we'd expect from a system. Um, but just to point out that it's not always necessarily going to be so simple if we have a non-linear system. So here you can see that if I put in um, x1 into this non-linear equation, this could be something like a, a sine curve or something like that, for example. If I put x1 in, then I'll get an output y1. If I put x2, I'll get some output y2. So far, so good. But now, if I put in the sum of those two values, so if I put in x1 plus x2, map it onto this nonlinear curve here, then the output I get, which is y uh, with the input of x1 plus x2, you can see that this overall output value here does not equal the sum of y1 plus y2. So the principle of superposition doesn't apply for nonlinear mappings such as this curve here. Now, we will be focusing on linear systems uh, throughout this module, and so complications like the one we've just seen here uh, will not be what we are considering. Okay, so now moving on from the single independent variable case to considering our signals and functions. So now we've got um, an input function. Again, no longer just, a, a, a say, a value x1. We're now going to put in a whole array of values here, a whole function, which I'm going to call an input function, and label it with 1. Here it's a discrete function, you've got these discrete samples, and it's just going to be a value of 1 here at, say, position 7. Um, and this is going to go through some system. So this could be you know, some simplified 1D discrete imaging system, just for uh, the sake of an example. We run it through the system, and then we get some um, output function, which I'm calling f out and labeling it with 1 because it came from that input. And that's also, of course, um, discreetly sampled. Um, the same would be true for, say, an input function f in 2. Here it is. It's just, a, uh, it's just a value of 1 at position 2. We run it through that same system, and we get some other output. Okay, And it won't, won't necessarily look like the output from the first input. But the point of a linear system is as follows, that if we were to now add together, just like we did in the linear equation where we added x1 and x2, if we were now to add together f in 1 plus f um, input 2, 
to get this function here. And notice how easy it is to add together functions, just like it is easy to add together scalars. All we do is just visit each of these, um, each of these indices, each of these positions of the independent variable, and we just add that value to that value to get this value, add that value to that value to get this value, and so on. And so we add this value to this value to get that value. It's like doing kind of parallel addition for every single uh, point in the function. So that's how we get um, this overall f uh, input 1 plus f input 2. And the point with a linear system is that if we run that through that linear system, then the output that we obtain here is simply the summation of these outputs that we had obtained when we put those input functions in independently, just by themselves. So we know we've got f out 1 and f out 2 for those first two inputs. And then when we put the two input functions in sim simultaneously, if you like, by adding them together, then the output is simply the sum of those, uh, the outputs obtained individually. Okay, uh, so that was for a 1D discrete system. Um, the same would hold for a 1D uh, continuous uh, signal processing system. Here we've got an example input function. Um, looks like a, a kind of a sine wave. And when we run it through our system, uh, it looks like it's doing some kind of phase shift where it's just uh, sliding it um, in one direction or the other. Um, here we've got a second input function here. And again, when we run it through our system, it's doing some kind of shifting of that waveform. So far, so good. That's just showing what the outputs are like for particular inputs. And now here I'm showing the summation of those two input functions. So I've got f input 1 plus f input 2. That's this. And you can find that function just by scanning across that uh, time axis and just adding all the function values together to get the overall summed function, input 1 plus input 2. When we run it through the system, so imagine some arrow here, to give the overall output, then that output, if it's a linear system, is just the summation of output 1 and output 2. So again, this is what we'd intuitively expect, um, but it's only really linear systems that do this intuitive thing. Had this been a non-linear system, which we'll see in a moment, it wouldn't have necessarily done such a straightforward mapping. Um, here I'm just emphasizing the fact that with a linear system, had we scaled that input function, say by a value of 0.5, then the output would be scaled by a value of 0.5. So you can see 0.5 times input 1, 0.5 um, of output 1 is what we get here. Had the second input function been scaled by some amount 1.5, these are just arbitrary examples I'm giving, then the output function would also have been scaled by 1.5. And then again, by linearity, if we add together 0.5 times input 1 plus uh, 1.5 times input 2 to give this overall input function, then the output would just be the sum of those two outputs shown on the, on the right-hand side there. So putting that all together uh, mathematically, uh, we're saying a certain input function 1 gives a certain output function 1. Input function 2 gives an output function 2. If we add the two input functions together, then the output from the system, which I'm representing just by this simple arrow here, would just be the sum of those two outputs. Then we can also weight or scale um, each of those inputs. So if I use a weighting factor W1 for input 1 and a weighting factor W2 for input 2, then sure enough, at the output, those weighting factors carry through. So if I double the input, I'm doubling the output from that input. If I double input 2, then I get double uh, output to, and so on. And the point is, we could do that for a large number of different input functions. Here I'm showing one, two, three, up to capital J. That could be a really large number of different input functions, which when I add together, give me um, basically the sum of all the outputs from all of those individual input functions with the respective weights of those functions. So that's all captured in this overall expression at the bottom of the slide here, where we're saying we can add together, we can sum together, say, a large number, j equals 1 to capital J, different input functions with different weights. When we run them through our linear system, then what we get is the sum of all of the individual outputs had we put all of those inputs in individually with the respective weighting factor for each one of them. So again, it's intuitive. Um, uh, is what we'd expect for a system to do. And, and that is what we'll be dealing with in this module, uh, linear systems.
So moving on now to discrete uh, 2D images, here I've got some input function here, it's like a brain phantom that we'd use uh, for simulations in, in for, for a PET scanner for example. And so in this simple example, the system is just an image processing uh, system where you can see here it's just doing some kind of Gaussian blurring, some kind of smoothing process. And so a certain input image will give a certain output image. So F1 goes to F output 1. Um, if I put in a different simulation phantom, this is the well-known Shep-Logan phantom, often used in medical imaging for simple tests and simulations. If I put that through my blurring system, then I get some blurred output. And so I'm just saying F input 2, which is now a discrete image, gives some output function F out 2, which is also a function of those two independent um, spatial variables. And if this system, if this image processing system is linear, then if I add together those two functions, so remember what we did in the earlier slides where we just scanned across from left to right and just added together all the values. Likewise, adding together two images, we just visit each and every pixel location and just add together uh, the two input images. So it's just the simple sum at every single pixel location. So if we add together those two images to give this, we've got this kind of combination of that brain phantom with the Shep-Logan phantom. If we pass that through our image processing system, then what we get is none other than the sum of the two outputs of what we would have got when we just put those images in individually. And so that's what's shown here. So that's an example of a linear system uh, for 2D discrete images. Okay, um, and in this example, I've just um, added on uh, the principle of scaling the input image here. So that uh, PET uh, phantom there for positron emission tomography, I've just scaled it by 0.2, run it through that image processing system. Sure enough, I get the output that we had on the previous slide, but just scaled by 0.2. So that scale factor just carries through naturally. Here, I haven't changed um, the input function, so the output is the same. And then again, by linearity, I could just sum together those two, put them, put them both in uh, to the image processing system, and then the output is just the sum of those individual outputs. So that is as would be expected. Right, so now it's uh, just to give you the contrast of systems that we won't be dealing with, but just so as you understand what non-linearity would be, uh, here now, um, this 2D... Uh, image processing system is now doing a smoothing process and then it's setting some kind of threshold where it's saying any values below a certain level set to zero. So here you can see that the kind of grey matter regions have been preserved but these white matter regions were too low in intensity after the smoothing and were set to zero. Um, so that's an input function one going to some output function one. Um, we could also consider the Shep-Logan phantom again, put that in, F input 2 to give an output 2. And you can see here in that case, because this phantom was already quite low valued, that when you smooth it and apply that same threshold, a lot of the output has just been set to zero. However, if we add together those two inputs to give this summed image and run that through this non-linear system, which is just doing a smoothing and then a background subtraction, a kind of thresholding operation, then you can see here what we get is not the sum of those two individual outputs. That's because when we added the uh, image values together in the input, they're now large enough such that when they smooth, are smoothed and when we apply the threshold, the threshold doesn't wipe out those larger values. So this is an example of a nonlinear system. And so as you can see, as I've indicated here, uh, for a nonlinear system, we cannot make this assumption that adding together inputs corresponds to an output which is just the sum of those individual outputs. That does not hold if we have a nonlinear system. And just to say, this example of doing thresholding would actually be something that is done in a, in, in a processing layer of a deep network, such as a convolutional neural network. So this is a very real example. Uh, this kind of thresholding process would be like applying an activation function, for example but it's beyond the scope of what we want to cover in this module. It's just giving you an example of a nonlinear system, which is indeed a practical example of a nonlinear system though. Right, so this is just a summary slide um, saying what I've just covered really. We've been talking about the principle of superposition, 
And so here it's now with continuous time functions. Again, you should be happy swapping between time and space, between continuous and discrete functions. So if y1 of t is the response to x1 of t, and if y2 of t is the response to x2 of t, if it's a linear system, then if we put in x1 of t plus x2 of t, then the output is y1 of t plus y2 of t. And that can be called the additivity um, a property, if you like. And now if we scale some input x1, um, then the output is the same scaling factor um, of the output of just putting in the unscaled x1. So ax1 goes to ay1, and that's homogeneity, where a is any constant. And so, you know, this is just basically repeating what I've said already in the previous slides, but just giving you a, a different notation, because you should be able to handle this, this kind of description in different notations. Um, and so again, this is with the adding the two functions together and also scaling them differently. It just corresponds to scaling those outputs in the same way and also just summing those individual outputs. And this again is the principle of superposition here expressed more generally in that general form that I've already talked you through earlier. Um, okay, so this is a final example um, of a nonlinear system. This is of the form uh, y equals um, mx plus c, if you like, so kind of a classic linear equation, or we'd call it a linear equation, but it doesn't really hold as a linear mapping in the context that we're talking about, because this minus 3 um, is, is a little bit like the kind of thresholding process that we saw earlier, which makes effectively a nonlinear mapping. So, here we're saying, as an aside, that um, an important property of linear systems is that if you put a zero input in, you should get a zero output. And you can see with this kind of y equals mx plus c, um, with this kind of mapping, if we put a zero x in here, we're going to get a minus three um, on the output. And that's what we're saying here. And so that system is not linear. In other words, you can't expect the kind of x1 plus x2 um, input to give a y1 plus y2 output, as we've seen in earlier slides. That You're welcome to try it, um, but it won't hold for this kind of expression. Okay, so in review then, we've covered a really core principle, that of linearity. You'll hear, hear it mentioned a lot, and so it's really important to understand this very basic concept. And really, it's this principle of super, superposition that we've, we've covered. And then I've also given you a, a contrast uh, by mentioning what a nonlinear system uh, would do. Of course, there are infinitely many nonlinear systems, um, but I've just given you, you know, an example or two just to give you an idea. So thank you.